Mm. We now live in a generation where someone wakes up to check their phone rather than to greet the person next to them. We live in a world where someone asks for directions and we're concerned about what's the next tweet. So if someone came from another planet, they'll be amazed on how much we give so much importance to devices rather than people close to us. Okay, uh, let me just reply this. I'll, I'll be back. Uh, uh. Okay, we live in a world where you go to a combi, umchova, and everyone there in that combi is on their phone. We now live in a world where we are not concerned about helping the other person. What we're concerned is sharing that story to the world. If you look at the number of incidents where accidents are occurring, where people are now driving and checking their phones, and you also look at the rates of mental health issues that have been on the rise, suicide, depression, caused by overindulgence of social media. Where is the problem? So in the kitchen, there's been an increase in the number of meals being burnt because of lack of concentration from the person cooking that meal. The reasons being checking our phone, or checking our laptop, checking our tablets, or watching TV and no more concentrating on what we're cooking. So we're now actually concerned about the next moment and we're now forgetting about the easiness of this moment, the present moment. And we're now more anxious when our party is about to die rather than to give an ear to someone who wants to listen. So we've got rates of uh, hypertension, rates of uh, blood pressure, uh, rates of stress actually going up because of uh, overindulgence on social media. And now the challenge, the big challenge now is when we start to look at what other people are doing and we start to compare. As research has shown, social media is affecting how we view ourselves. Social media is affecting how we view the next person. And it's now a world of what I saw on that person. So it's now a world of um, assumption becoming the best form of communication and assuming that what you see there on social media is real. But as you've seen, so you see most of the stuff that's posted on social media, some of it is not real. So we've lost the art of eating and feeling the texture and taste of our food. As smart as our bodies are, multitasking is unhealthy for the mind. Staring on the phones reduces our ability to taste and experience the unique ingredients in our food. Losing this ability thus means we've lost the essential connection of the nutrients needed for growth and development. Just like a child who needs attention from their parents, Food requires presence for it to flourish. If we became conscious about what we ate, we would realize the level of nutrients within our plates and to determine whether there is a shortfall within these. So food consciousness is a prerequisite in the appreciation of how nutrients play an important role in physical, mental and spiritual growth. So what happened to us putting our gadgets away and having quality food time, having a conversation over a plate of his trial? This also applies to how we've let the big screens detect how we eat. We're concentrating on the TV rather than the plate. So I just wanted to provide my two cents knowledge on this problem of how we can mitigate these effects of social media, uh, specifically in relation to food. But also you would see that it also doesn't only apply to food. There are also other uh, issues where this has affected our lives. So firstly, I work on what's called the 10 a.m. rule. As you can see, we now live in an unconscious way of our which social media. There is no more cap now. Someone wakes up at 5, they're on the phone. Uh, the whole day, uh, actually, you can see they're online. Uh, so you see there's no more like time that they set aside to be on social media. So the 10 a.m. rule, uh, also applying in the food, is I wake up, I'm a morning person, uh, start off with the spiritual world. Um, then from there on, I now tap into the physical world. So do that meditation, um, do affirmations, uh, how the day is going to be like. Then head over to the gym, uh, do the exercises uh, one hour per, per day. As if you haven't seen, you just need about 30 to 45 minutes of, of exercise. Then from there on, before 10 o'clock, the first meal of the day, breakfast. Uh, what you can also do is now put away your gadget, put away your phone uh, when you're eating breakfast. And either, if you're not strict enough, what you can do is just leave the phone in another room, go to the kitchen, uh, take your plate, 
go sit in the living or go sit outside where you're going to eat and just concentrate on what's on the plate. So that's uh, one option that, uh, that you can use. So then uh, eating 10 o'clock is when I now enter social media, um, check messages, check emails, um, check uh, YouTube. So it's, it's one hour uh, that. So I have to do everything within an hour uh, of replying, of seeing. Because I really do not want to consume heaven over consumption of, of uh, information. As you have seen, my generation does now with so much information that's going on and so much information, the brain is just so stressed out. Okay, then secondly, what we need to do is to put our gadgets away when we're eating, when we're cooking, uh, meeting up with friends, uh, doing prize and, and so on. So uh, I've also managed to like attend events and I got to learn this when some events, what, the, what they do now is they actually bring a ball, then you actually push your phones, there's someone who's going to manage those balls, then there's one phone where you can actually call your children. So they, what they're trying to do is train people to be within that moment and we're just concentrating on the people, on, on the space, uh, on the event, it's being musical, this is chamber monks playing, we're actually focusing on, on that moment. So the same also when you're walking, do not text and walk, do not app and walk. So we actually need to put our phones down when we want to do something. Like I mentioned, uh, multitasking is an unhealthy way uh, for the brain to operate. Um, the last one is uh, what's called a low information diet. So this was brought out by an author called Tim Ferriss. He wrote a book called The 4-Hour Workweek. Uh, one of my books, one of my favorite books that I, uh, that I love. So I'll just leave that book also in the description box below. So what Tim Ferriss is advocates is that you need time where you just have, need to have a low information uh, diet. Low information is the amount of information that you consume should be low so that you are able to do other tasks that do not need an oversupply and overindulgence that information that you would have consumed. So now with the low information diet, it not only applies to social media. So it's the same, low information diet to the TV that you are watching. Uh, what, what are you watching? Uh, first, it is the thing that you're watching good for your health, good for your brain. Then also in terms of the newspapers, then uh, the social media will also come into play. Where you are saying, okay, in the month of September uh, in Tuasa, I am going to have a one week low information uh, diet. So this low information diet can also be linked to what's called the social media fast. We are saying, okay, for one week, I am off my phone. I am off my tablet. I am off my laptop. I am just going to, if it's important, I'm just going to talk to people via the phone. I'm going to call them, uh, but I'm just going to minimize that time. So why that's, that is important, you just want to determine what, what are called withdrawal symptoms. We've got now these withdrawal symptoms. And it's fine enough for always, we see this with the alcohol, uh, people who consume alcohol, uh, the drugs. But it's also now there on social media, where someone's phone reaches 3% in battery life or when their data is about to expire. Your level of anxiety goes up, you become anxious. Uh, this is going to end, this is going to end. And also that's another test, uh, the test of attachment. We are actually attached to things. And if you want to see if you are attached to something, if that thing is taken away from you and you start having these anxiety, these panic attacks, it means you're actually addicted. Uh, you're attached to, to that thing. What you can do is also switch off notifications. Uh, psychologists will tell you that the level of dopamine is now high, also within social media usage. Dopamine is a hormone that's produced when you're having sex, uh, when you drugs, alcohol, uh, th that feeling of it's like short term where you're like, oh, okay, I posted something and you see, you see two, two likes. So when you post something another day, you go to the notification, oh, how many people actually liked uh, my thing. So just to explain also further on this, uh, if you look at alcohol, uh, and here in Zimbabwe we've got a law that no one is supposed to consume alcohol below the age of 18. So what we've done now with social media, we've in the form taken alcohol and given it to children. So now in families, you find children are also glued on their phones. But where is the problem there? The children are seeing their parents. It's now normal to their parents when they get home from work, they're on their phones. So if they see you on the phone, they believe that's a normal way of doing uh, things. So now these levels of dopamine are now also high in children. So what happens now, you've got also high levels of stress, depression now among children. 
because now their mind the maturity level is just too small for them to actually process that information that they're consuming on social media so also as parents what we need to do is also put away these gadgets turn off your wi-fi modem uh, have a time where it's actually family time have a time where you actually tell the children what time it is to be online so we are supposed to be control of these gadgets uh, of these mediums so and they are not supposed to be in control of us so when also applies to food we also need to have that food consciousness back where we actually know what we're eating on the table to feel the texture to feel the taste of the food going forward so thank you for watching uh, my name is prince sivalo I'll uh, catch you on the next one. So tell me well, how do you view social media and how do you use social media uh, also in line with our, in the context of food. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Togoz, Amako, Leset. Remember, keep the love, uh, keep the good. Peace.